Hello, and welcome to the Omni MLS Quick Start webinar. My name is Javier Loza. I'm a certified evaluator and instructor and director of education for Omni MLS Universidad, which is Omni MLS University. As far as the use of the manual goes, and in this webinar, we're going to focus on three parts, a presentation, which we're doing right now, a practice, and a process. A well-designed MLS, which is, stands for Multiple Listing Service, such as the Omni MLS, is the most valuable tool a real estate professional can use to help homeowners sell their properties, help prospective buyers find the perfect home to meet their needs, conduct market studies, and create database comparative market analysis. As a little more introduction, the Omni MLS course has been created with the purpose of contributing to the professionalization of the real estate sector. We expect that through this training, you can learn to manage efficiently the Omni MLS platform. This will allow you to optimize your time management, your resources, data, elements, and statistics, and will help facilitate the attention and service required by owners and buyers within the real estate field. The fundamental and differentiating factor of the workshop of an MLS system is that the properties in the MLS are all exclusive listings, and these can be shared with other agents, allowing others who use the system to collaborate in the purchase, sale, or lease of the listings. And this allows for a type of real estate collaboration where one agent can represent the owner and another can represent the buyer or the renter. This is the general objective of the course. For you to be able to identify, know, apply, and learn how to use the most important aspects of this incredible Omni MLS tool. The profile of the people taking this class should be as follows. It should be real estate agents with an interest in learning how to use the most current, innovative, and effective technological tools, which allows them to provide a more professional quality service to their clients, including owners, buyers, and renters. In order to get the most out of the Omni MLS system, you will need to be willing to learn technology and have a genuine interest in the growth of your client portfolio. The main advantage of the Omni MLS is that the entire real estate community wins when this powerful real estate tool is used properly. On one hand, the seller multiplies his possibilities of sale by having one listing agent and by having his property promoted by multiple real estate agencies. On the other hand, the buyer can access a wide portfolio of properties which makes it easier for him to find just the right property for his particular needs. In addition to this, not only buyers and sellers of real estate benefit, real estate companies gain a powerful tool that facilitates obtaining exclusive listings and ensures a well-regulated corroboration between Omni MLS subscribers. Via the Professional Real Estate Agent Code of Ethics that all subscribers must accept and adhere to, and a commitment to a committee of mediators to resolve any type of dispute that might arise. Some of the topics that we're going to review today are how to create your personal brand, how to do contact registration, how to elaborate a CMA, a comparative market analysis, how to upload your exclusive listings, how to search for properties for potential buyers, how to do reverse prospecting, and how to change the property status, among other things. First of all, we need to understand what an MLS is. In a short definition, an MLS is a software that allows real estate offices, agents, and brokers to share information of the properties available in the market. It is defined as a system in which agents, real estate consultants, can cooperate with each other to sell or rent their exclusive listings. This is done with the use of technology in a safe and effective manner, reducing the transactional times to better meet the needs presented by the owners, buyers, and renters. Omni MLS is a tool to help listing brokers find cooperative agents and brokers working with buyers to help sell their clients' homes. The philosophy uh, of what an MLS is, guys, uh, or the philosophy of sharing between professional real estate agents was born in the United States and has become very popular in Europe, mainly in Spain. It wasn't until the late 1800s when real estate brokers regularly gathered at the offices of their local associations 
to share information about properties they were trying to sell. They agreed to compensate other brokers who helped sell those properties, and the first MLS was born based on this fundamental principle that's unique to organized real estate. Help me sell my inventory, and I'll help you sell yours. Mexico is, is in the initial stages of using an MLS on a national level, and no other country in the world has a national MLS, such as what we're going to have here in Mexico with Omni MLS. Our Omni MLS is designed to elevate the real estate activity towards a more professional direction, to generate a shift in the way real estate operations are done, to provide the personalized and professional service that real estate clients require in this day and age, and to allow for greater efficiency in real estate operations. The MLS is much more functional when the professional agent, consultant, and brokerage uses exclusive listings as a way of working, as in the case is in the United States. The main advantage in using an Omni MLS system is that the entire real estate sector in the country wins. The owner's benefit, and as it optimizes his opportunity to sell his home, while only working with an agent. And that exposure of their property to thousands of potential buyers who would not otherwise be reached, as well as having his property in multiple web pages of real estate agencies. Buyers also benefit in that they can obtain information about all Omni MLS listed properties while working with only one agent or broker. The real estate market is competitive, my friends, and the business is unique in that competitors must also cooperate with each other to ensure a successful transaction. MLS systems facilitate that cooperation. Furthermore, the buyer can access a wide portfolio of properties, which makes it easier for him to find just the right property he is looking for. So on behalf of Omni MLS, I welcome you to the Omni MLS system. Now, why don't we go live and actually get to know the Omni MLS platform? One of the first things that you're going to realize when you start using the Omni MLS system that it's much more than just a regular MLS. We've got some core tools and some additional tools that is going to make the job of being a real estate professional in Mexico much easier. For example, we've got association software through uh, Genio. We've got education through Omni MLS Universidad. We've got documents through Lone Wolf. We've got the actual MLS system through Matrix. CRM and back office through Genio, lock boxes through Sentry Lock, referrals through Imovel, tenant screening through Rent 10, social media marketing through Omni MLS Marketer, and commercial issues through the Analyst Pro. Now, as far as your additional tools, we've got government documents by the federal government, we've got Omni MLS benefits, Omni MLS merchandise, and Omni MLS industry news. We also have uh, rate survey through Rate My Agent, and we've got research and development through R&D. So as you can see, it's much more than just a regular MLS. So now, let's go live. Under Core Tools, I want you to go to the MLS button there. It says Core Logic Matrix, and I want you to press that button, and that will bring up the platform we're about to see. As you can see, this will open up the Omni MLS matrix. Now, uh, the top menu, My Matrix, as you can see there, we have access to the dashboard, summary, contacts, My Listings, My CMAs, Auto Emails, Sent Emails, Safe Searches, and My Carts. In the search, we're gonna be able to search for residential sale, residential lease, commercial lease, commercial sale, land, cross property, agent, agent quick, agent admin, office, and we're also going to be able to look at the stats, market reports, finance. This is an only uh, English here. Summary, calculator, sellers, estimated net proceeds, and buyer's closing cost. An input, listing transfer, agent transfer. And in California Regional, we're going to be able to see all the properties. Let me go ahead and do and I agree here. I have read and agreed to the terms. And then I'm going to go ahead and agree. This is going to allow us to review the CRMLS matrix system and we'll be able to look for properties all over the state of California. And last but not least, we need to go over here to the little bell, which is uh, where your no notifications are going to appear. And under your name, 
as you can see, we have a couple of options here, settings, mode, mobile, uh, English, and Spanish. So if, for example, you want to review this in Spanish, we can go to change the language on the side to Spanish, or we can go ahead and continue in English. We'll go ahead and continue in English for this particular segment. Our next step in this quick start webinar is to be able to go up here under your name and go under settings, and we're going to see a brand new menu. My information, hot sheets, portal notification settings, speed bar shortcuts, custom displays, IDX configuration, team meetings, and custom exports. So we're going to go ahead and go to manage personal branding and options. As you can see, you have another menu here information, header and footer, CMA cover sheet, email signature, agent web page, and portal profile. Now, in this particular page of information, as you can see, there's some pre uh, charged uh, fields such as your first name, your last name, your email address, your agency office, your phone number, your mailing address, your city uh, address, as well as your zip code. Now, this page allows you to manage the personal information used by Matrix. For each of the fields below, you can either use the value from your roster entry, if there is one, or enter a value manually. It is recommended that you use the roster value whenever one is available. However, with these buttons here on the right-hand side where it says override, you can choose to override that information and that allows you to actually edit the information and put in a, another name, um, uh, abbreviation of a name, or however uh, you want your information to appear. My suggestion is that you start and edit the information that you see in this particular form. Fill in the requested fields with your own personal data. To enable the field, you need to choose the edit box on the right-hand side of the screen. When you're done, in order to save all your changes, you need to press the button Save. If you do not know which information to add to any of the fields, don't worry about it. You can omit it for now, and you can add the information at a later time. Remember that the more information you provide, the more effective and complete your profile will be, adding to the effectiveness in the use of the Omni MLS system. I'm going to go ahead and add a few things here to my field on the MLS Universidad. Okay, uh, I could write uh, Director of Education. Okay, and uh, whatever other changes uh, I might want to add here, 5579, for example. And once I've to, if I want to edit anything or override any of the information in the text field, remember, I would have to press the button in order to override and then go ahead and change the information. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and leave it at that for now. And then we're gonna go to the end here and go save. This update updates our profile information. As you can see, if I go to another section and then come back to the information, the information that I added or edited is right there in the spaces that I provided. So now we're gonna go ahead and go on to the header and footer section. You need to use this page to be able to customize your personal header, which is going to be displayed on your contacts portals and also available when you print displays and reports. You can select from a library of standardized banner images for your header, each with a complementary color scheme for your branding, or upload your own. You can also customize your print folder. Just for example, in this case, this is one that I've already chosen, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, use uh, a custom photo there. I'm going to go to Upload Photo, and here I can upload um, a, a photo. Since I don't have any photos uploaded into the Omni system, I can go ahead and use the Browse button. And uh, let me think of a photo here. I'm going to go ahead and right here. I'm going to go ahead and use that one right there. This is an idea. And as you can see, uh, the photo, there we go. Uh, it gives you a screen of what you're going to be able to show. Of course, you can... Uh, Change this a little bit. For example, I kind of like the photo right there. Okay, that's going to be the one I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and put save. As you notice, my personal profile picture was changed. I could also uh, select or change uh, our banner image or theme. I can go to some of the ones that are pre-installed in the system. So, for example, uh, let's see. I kind of like this uh, this one right here. This one has it. So I'm going to go ahead and select the button there and go preview. And as you can see, my header was changed on my website. Also, you can uh, upload a custom banner image. Uh, suggested image size is 16,000, excuse me, 
1600 by 120. As you can see, it is a, a horizontal banner. In the header and footer section, we can also change our personal branding or what, what do we want to be known as? In this particular case, Javier Loza is my name, but under there, I can choose some of the information that I entered in the initial information tab. And so, for example, I could put my team here. In this case, I would be on the Universidad. I've got my email there. I can keep that. What other information do I want to appear on my web page? As you notice, when I select something here, so for example, I'm going to go ahead and select, um, uh, there we go, uh, the web page. As you can see, as I select an item in the branding area, it automatically appears on my header section up above. I can deselect an item by going to the blank page, and therefore that, uh, once again, changes the information that people will see in my header. I can use the theme defaults, or I can actually use custom colors. If I decide to use custom colors, uh, it'll uh, give me my branding background color, my text color, my link color, and my background color. Uh, and you can decide uh, to use your um, personalized uh, uh, colors in this. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my, my theme defaults there. And as you can see, everything looks good. It is very, very important uh, uh, to save your work. Now it says here whether you wanna create a print a footer or not. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and go yes. And it's gonna show me what my footer is. Javier Loza on the MLS, uh, Javier Loza at OmniMLS.com or the information that I had selected as my footer and header information. As you can see, I can change that as well in my footer. I might wanna add in my footer my, uh, my phone number instead of my email, or I might want to add both. So in this case, I now added uh, both cell number and email number. And of course, I could also uh, customize my colors if I wanted to, or I'm just going to go ahead and uh, save my work here. I also have the option to reset branding to the defaults of the system. So I'm going to go ahead and go save, and now my information has been saved in this footer header section. Something else to mention here uh, that you can use throughout the whole system. If you see this little eye for uh, information and you press it, it will give you additional information regarding what that section is about or what that field is about. In this case, this is a portal header is used in the client portal and at the top of printed displays and reports. You may select the headers banners image from the library available uh, or upload your own. Uh, you can also upload and select personal photos as I mentioned. You can basically customize your branding within the Omni MLS system. I'm going to go ahead and put close here, and we're going to go on to the next section, which is the CMA cover sheet. In this section, what we need to do is customize the cover of your CMA report or your comparative market analysis reports. This appears on the screen as simply CMA. By customizing your CMA report, your clients will receive it just as you wish with the information that you have selected to share with them in particular. These fields are used to be able to write down the data of the properties that you're going to use as comparables in the CMA. You can have two options for the look of your CMA report. The first is to take the data used in the first step of this manual or edit the information shared on your CMA manually. As in the previous cases, you can edit the fields by selecting the boxes to change from the right side of your screen. Once you finish, the data will be saved, and each time you perform a new CMA, you will change the information sent to your clients. So you can actually personalize the information that you're sending in the CMA report, depending on the client. You can also upload a photograph if you, if you wish, which will be shown in the CMA report that you created. So why don't we go ahead and play a little bit with this section right now. Now, the same as before, as you can see here, we've got the override buttons. Automatically, it's gonna pull the information from the information section that we've already filled out. If I want to override this information, I would have to select the button that opens up the field, and then I'm able to change the information in there. So for example, instead of company, let's just say I don't want my company name for whatever reason to appear, I, no problem, I would override that information. <clears throat> and then of course, always remember to press the button save. Now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and upload a photo. Actually, first of all, it's requesting that I uh, make sure. <laughs> Let me go ahead and cancel that. Let me save what I've already done. Okay. Now I'm going to go to upload photo. And I'm going to go ahead and change this photo here. I'm going to browse. Uh, I 
here. I'm going to go grab this photo there. And as you can see, my photo is now listed there. And I'm going to go ahead and save. And I've got the, a new photo. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and change photo again, just FYI. Because in this case, I don't want a full body here. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a little smaller. Maybe a little headshot there. Okay, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, that's about right. Now I'm going to go ahead and press the save button. As you can see, now it's just a headshot instead of a full body photo. So I've done that and uh, the photo has automatically been saved once I've added it on there. Now this is going to take us to the next section, which is the email signature section. Now this page allows you to set your email signature, which is added to the bottom of any emails that you might send from the matrix system. In this email signature section, we're going to set our email signature, which is going to be added at the bottom of the emails that you send from the matrix system. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and uh, adapt my email a little bit here. I'm going to make that bold. I'm going to increase the font size uh, right here. Font size uh, about a 14 is a good size. Okay, I could actually change that and change the color as well. Okay, I could make this in italics. Um, well, not italics, but uh, that font right there, just to make it a little bit different. And uh, this one, I can change that as well. Maybe if I want to make it bigger or do a different font. Um, there we go. So that's one way that you can add. Uh, I'll make sure that if you see a little red line there. Okay, so there. Okay, it's actually thinking Spanish there, so salud, salud, okay. <laughs> okay, actually, I'm going to write phone dash WhatsApp. Okay, so as with every other section, in order for the uh, changes to be applied, you need to go to the Save button. Now, it does give you another option here to add an image. If we click here, we can add a URL where this image is located. Select that image, and it will appear in this uh, segment right here. If I go, um, if I go to select an image, it's going to um, put up the images that I've already uploaded into the system. And so, for example, there we go. Okay, I just uh, uploaded that image there to my signature at the bottom. I could move this to the top here, uh, right there. One second. There we go. And just to make it a little bit nicer, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay. And uh, why don't we get rid of that line right there. And just so one, two, three, four, five. So it looks a little bit nicer there. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And one more time. One, two, three, four. And I've got a nice little signature there for my email. So we're going to go ahead and save. And that's now saved. And now we can go on to the next section, which is the agent website section. Here we are at the agent web page menu item. And you've got two main options here. On the left hand side, where it says activation, we can enable an agent web page or we can disable an agent web page. If you enable your agent web page, your Agent web page URL is going to be www. Your name or whatever you put in this section here. In my case, it says Javier Loza. Dot Omni. Dot MLS Matrix. Dot com. You do have the option to decide what your web page title is, and I really suggest that you use uh, search engine optimization keywords in your web page title. In your homepage content, this is a. Uh, the title section. So this is going to be the title of your homepage content. We put real estate in Mexico. And here you need to talk about yourself. You need to actually try to um, highlight a little bit of uh, who you are, what your specialty in real estate is, what areas you work with, um, and any other thing that you think might be attractive, what your association membership is, uh, whether you have a state license, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, remember, you've got to sell yourself here, folks. This is going to be your web page. Now in this section, at this moment, we only have the contact information. When we 
go up and fill out the information in the portal profile, then we're going to enable these other sections that is photo, inventory, slideshow, and video. The other thing that you can also highlight is you can uh, basically not specify a particular map or area that you work with. You can restrict searches on your web page to a certain area. Normally, I would restrict them to my you know, city or in certain cases, the state that I live in. Or you can specify a initial map view and users can uh, search this area. So I'm going to go ahead and write restrict searches to a specific area. So I'm going to go to my rectangle page, right? Select the rectangle. And I'm going to choose the area that I want people to be able to search on my web page. I'm going to press the save button. Remember, always press the save button to save your work. So now I've restricted searches to that Baja California state area. In this section, I could either include a sign up form or not. This would be a sign up message. What do you want to tell people? Hey, for further information regarding my uh, uh, listings or for further information on how I can help you sell, buy or rent here in Baja California or whatever state you're in, please fill up the following form. Basically, remember, this is a call to action for people to sign up your, your uh, sign up on your web page. Now, this part right here under additional domains, if you already have a URL bot, then just say through, uh, through uh, SiteGround or GoDaddy or some other uh, domain server, well then, great, you could actually redirect that particular web page, whatever it is, to this agent web page that you have developed here. So even if someone puts uh, uh, www.javierloza.com, if with my domain server, I have that redirected to this particular site, it will automatically do that. And so I would definitely recommend that. And remember, the save button is very important. I'm gonna go ahead and just remember, photo, inventory, video, and portal greeting. Notice how these are not highlighted, so I can't, actually, portal greeting I can highlight because I was just playing around a few minutes ago in my portal profile. Oops, remember, we got to save everything, guys. Hold on, hold on. Uh, cancel one more time. Let me go down here to save. Okay. If I go to my portal profile way, this is where we're going to customize our agent website that we just created. So for example, in the photo, I'm going to select photo here. And I don't have a photo currently for this part of my web agent website. So I'm going to upload a photo. It's going to obviously go to the photos that I've already selected or used. If you notice here, I'm going to go to number two. I'm going to go ahead and use this photo here. And I'm going to go ahead and save. So I already have a photo on my uh, website. I'm going to close that up. Portal greeting. In this case, it gives you an opportunity to be bilingual. And remember, it's very important that everything nowadays be in Spanish as well as English. So uh, under title, welcome to my webpage, the, the translation, Bienvenidos a mi página web. And uh, I, obviously, I'm going to put a little bit more text as far as uh, um, uh, the welcoming that I'm going to give readers onto my website. So I'm going to go close that, inventory, slideshow, and links. Do I want to add my active listings or do I want to add my office active listings or the active listings of everyone in your real estate office? I'm going to go ahead and select my active listings. And then it's going to go here and say uh, a video section. The video set, a video can be uploaded to your website, but it needs to be uploaded prior to YouTube. And what you're going to do is you're going to copy that YouTube, YouTube URL, throw it on here and put a little title there as far as what your video is about. I recommend a video highlighting your real estate services or highlighting yourself as a real estate agent. In this case, I'm not gonna uh, put anything, but uh, you guys are. <laughs> now in contact information, this is automatically generated from the contact information that we've already added to our footer of our, of our documents. However, just as before, I can change the information. Maybe I just wanna be Javier on my webpage and then more maybe uh, on the MLS there. I want other information. I don't want Omni MLS twice. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of this. Remember, there's a blank space here. And uh, I'm fine with that. Email. I'm missing a phone number somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right there. And once again, the save button is going to save all that information. Now that I added stuff to these uh, alternative sections, I need to go back to the agent web page. And notice how these are now in dark. So I can actually add the photo there. I can add, excuse me, the inventory slideshow. I can add the photo. 
And I could say, well, what do I want first? Well, I want my contact information first. Okay, uh, maybe I want, uh, well, as you notice, I didn't put a video, so the video is not highlighted. Well, I guess I would want the portal greeting, the, hey, you know, welcome to my website to be first. Maybe uh, highlights my inventory slideshow and links of the properties that I have and move up my picture right there. Okay, so I've uh, decided on the selected sections that I've already filled out in the other section was the portal profile, which ones I want, and once again, save. After we have completed our portal profile area, then we're done with filling out the adjustments to our web page and to our reports. We can go on to the next step, which is the registration of contacts. In order to do that, let's go back to my matrix up here and select the contacts button. As we notice, since I have no contacts in my MLS, well, none will appear. So we're gonna go over here to add contacts and we're gonna fill out a contact here. Well, I'm actually gonna fill out myself as a contact because I've got all my phone number and information already on there. Uh, let me see. Any additional fields, additional name would be uh, the, the, you know, the other person's uh, spouse, uh, partner, et cetera. Business information, if I want to add that on there as well. I'm just going to go ahead and fill out these fields here. Okay. And then we go to, once again, the Save button. But before we do that, notice that we've got a note section here. In the note section, we can put information about their contact, their preferences uh, for the way to contact them. Uh, and uh, the enable reverse prospecting we're going to talk about in just a second. That's kind of important. And if the person has a mortgage pre-approved, then we can go, already go ahead and select that. And if we go down here, we can select the setting of that content. Is it a buyer? Is it a seller? Is it a friend? Is it someone that we just don't know yet uh, which category they fall in? So I'm going to go ahead and say that this person is a buyer. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get rid of the mortgage pre-approved. And in my notes, interested in buying a second home in the Cerritos Palani area has about, um, I don't know, 200,000 USD. Call him on the weekends. So this note area is basically just for you. I'm going to go ahead and press save. And as you notice, my contact has been included uh, under name, email, category. The auto email, we're going to do that once we do a search. Save searches that I've done for this contact. The last time that I changed email or printed something on the contact, once the contact has visited my uh, web page, how would the contact visit my web page? Well, by sending them an email or sending them a, 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 a comparative market analysis with some comparables. Well, then as soon as they do click on the uh, email or the report that you sent them, well, it's going to send them to your web page and that will let us know and that the MLS system now will let you know when their last visit was, uh, any listing notes here, and the reference number. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a comparative market analysis or a CMA for one of our clients. So we're going to uh, go to the beginning of our dashboard, which can be accessed through my matrix dashboard right there, or just pressing on the Omni MLS logo. Both take you to the same direction. So then we're going to go to my matrix and about one, two, three, four, five spaces down, it says my CMAs. So we're going to go ahead and select my CMAs. And as you notice, I haven't created any CMAs in the past. So we're going to start fresh and create a new CMA. Okay, the first thing it's going to ask us is, well, who, who we're going to send the CMA to? Now, if we have that person in our contact list, we can go, go ahead and select that person or we can press the create a new contact here. But we've already reviewed how to add a contact in our quick start session. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, send it here to Javier Loza Bazan, and I uh, said it's in English. Now this would be the description of the actual CMA. Uh, so I would write CMA for Javier um, in uh, Javier uh, home in Cerritos Island. Okay, that's going to be my name of that CMA report. Now, just as a reminder, the CMA is going to be saved in the system for up to 180 days from the date of the last modification. 
So if you're approaching the uh, 180 day mark and, and, and you want it to continue a little bit longer, well then just go ahead and modify something in the CMA and that'll give it another 180 day period. So we're gonna go up to the next section after start, which says pages. And here we're gonna decide what pages we're gonna to add to our uh, CMA report. This could change uh, based on every client or you could have a default set of pages that you normally sent. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and clear everything here. And I'm going to show you here on the left-hand side. We're going to open up the fields here. Okay. And uh, map and step. Okay. So these are all the pages that I've got available uh, to send in my CMA report. So, for example, do I want a cover sheet? Well, absolutely. <laughs> Pretty important, right? Uh, subject price adjustments? Yeah. Minimum and maximums? Correct. Days on market chart? Why not? Uh, list price and sale price, we can go with that one. CMA brief. Now, notice uh, some of these say USD as in dollars and other ones don't. So if you're ever going to send your CMA report uh, to an English-speaking person that's going to be paying in dollars uh, or, or selling in dollars, well, then go ahead and uh, put the USD recommendation on there. If not, it's going to be done in pesos. Um, now, as far as the static of information, it's additional information that you can add to your CMA report, such as activity versus timing, my guarantee to you effective overpricing. We always know that there's some property owners that always want to elevate the price, uh, the listing price of their home so that they have a little space to negotiate. I don't necessarily believe in that, but anyway. Um, uh, benefits of using a realtor. Well, yeah, I really like that one. We're going to add that one. Uh, market analysis explanation, definitely. Uh, where commission goes, I think that's important for the uh, seller to know. Um, steps of positive showing, definitely important for a seller to know. And uh, we're going to go ahead and add a CMA map. Now, as you notice, in the order that I selected the items, it's in the order that they appear to appear. However, for example, uh, benefits of using a realtor, I might have to move, move, move that down a little bit. I'm going to move that down to the bottom. Um, where commission goes, I'm also going to move that down to the bottom. Steps of positive showing, move that down to bottom. And now I've got all my CMA. I'm going to move that one right there and the CMA map right there. Okay, perfect. Now I've selected the pages that I want to appear on this particular CMA report. I'm going to actually go ahead and set these as my default pages so I don't have to do this task in the past. And as you know here, it says save CMA page defaults. So we're, we're good to go there. We're going to go on to the next uh, item, which is the subject, the subject property or the property that you're doing the comparative market analysis for. In this case, since I don't have a property MLS form, because I've never uploaded this property into the system, when well, I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, subject property field, I'm going to add my subject fields manually. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a photo of this property. Um, the suggestion is that the optimal size for this be 1024 by 768. Go ahead and pick a photo here. Okay, there's my photo of my dream home. Street number, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, pick um, here something in Rosarito, where I can live at now. Uh, total bedrooms, uh, this is a five bedroom home. Uh, baths, three baths. Um, let's see, I'm going to square feet, this is about 2000. Um, price in dollars, uh, this is uh, 250,000. Okay. Uh, map location, uh, let's locate. The house here. I can do it by street address. Let's see, I would locate. As you, wow, that was fast. <laughs> I located my street address real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's down there. Uh, any remarks? Uh, this is uh, a great uh, two for one deal as it has an independent um, apartment in the basement level. Uh, okay, um, let's see. Spelling is always important, guys. Okay. So uh, we've got the picture. I've got uh, information on the uh, comparable property that I'm going to use. Uh, I could decide to save the custom fields as default, or in other words, the information that I loaded on here as my default. Uh, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to save it as default, but you can. And now I'm going to go on to the next one, to the cover. Okay, so, so far it's starting to show me a little bit of the information that I want on there. Now, I remember with the contact information that we filled out originally in the Quick Start webinar, 
that basically pulls that contact information from there. In this case, I'm going to, uh, I, I can change that information. So, for example, uh, I'm doing a Novo Leon here. And as you can tell, uh, if you have autofill on your Google browser, where well, that makes everything a lot easier. Okay, so I've got the subject cover. I've got my contact information. Maybe I don't want to appear as Jose Javier Loza. Just uh, uh, I'm going to refer to my client as Javier Loza. No problem. Then I'm going to go to the comparables here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add from listings. Um, and I want to compare it with active listings, uh, possibly closed listings. Okay. Um, I want it's a residential sale. Okay. It's a single family residence. And within, uh, I'm going to go within five kilometers of my location. I'm going to. I basically told Google to go ahead and, and, and do that. And I'm going to go, I see there's eight matches here. So let's, let me go to the live count here. Okay, so these are the eight listings here in Playa de Rosarito that appear on my map. So, um, oh, this one's got 13 beds. That one's kind of out of out of the question. This one uh, looks good. The six bedrooms, this four bedroom might even work. This three, I'm going to go ahead and do this three bedroom in Popotla and this other three bedroom here. So these are going to be uh, my comparables. Uh, remember, when you're doing a comparative market analysis, the recommendation is always to do it minimum three. Um, a maximum, well, there's no maximum, but three to five is always a good choice. So I'm going to go ahead and add these as my selected comparables. Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to go into the next section, which is the map area. Okay, it kind of already selected, actually placed exactly where the subject property is. Perfect because we did that earlier, remember, when we were talking about the subject property here, as we placed, uh, we had them search for the property in this part, it automatically located my property. So that's why the, the map uh, isn't as important right now, because I've already done that. I'm gonna go ahead and do adjustments here. Um, and so my feature property, the total bedrooms, once again is, uh, well, actually it's right here, five, three uh, baths. Well, I don't have any half baths, okay. So I'm going to see, as I see here, we've got the low end and we've got a high end uh, of the price. Okay, uh, let's view in detail mode. Once again, it gives you a little bit more information. Uh, I didn't put any data, any data as far as the square feet and stuff. So I'm going to actually uh, change that because that's kind of important. Um, well, we're going to go ahead and continue. Uh, if you put more information on here, that's even a better deal, guys. Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and do pricing here. So we've got our comparables here. In this section, we've got a, a summary and additional analysis. The section provides some additional pricing statistics obtained by comparing the subject property with the comparables. Here, we can enter our suggested listing price. Uh, um, suggested listing price is uh, $250,000. Okay, any notes that uh, you might, might wanna add? Uh, regarding this comparative market analysis, whether uh, the property is in question or uh, or all ocean view, or your property is not, anything that you might uh, that might allow us to shed a little bit more light on this comparative market analysis. And then finally, we're going to go to the finish button. And as you can see, I've got my CMA here, really nice. And why don't we view the CMA? Uh, we, we're also going to send the CMA to someone, but let's check it out to, and see what kind of a job the some of the system did, and as you're going to as you're going to tell, uh, instead of creating CMAs the old-fashioned way, which is with an Excel chart and writing down the comparables yourself and the fields and the formulas, well, this is a much better method. Uh, compared to market analysis, today's date, photo, uh, of you, who I am, I prefer it for who, uh, subject property, my uh, digital signature there. Okay, this is the uh, my property and the comparables here. Okay, brand new house. Uh, interesting. Okay, so we've got the comparables here. Listing price between. Uh, oh, well, this is the maximum and the and the, and the high end. Obviously, a, a big big difference there. Um, days on the market, for example, that's always always uh, one of the things that I selected because this house, for example, it's been on the market for over two years. This has been on the market for a year and a half. It's been on the market for a little bit over a year, and so actually, this uh, this slot here is actually one of the comparables that I would work. List price, sale price, and days on market. Brief summary of the comparables here. As you can tell, the report is pretty thorough 
uh, researched and prepared by Javier Loza and, 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 and Feinfred. This represents an estimated sale price for the property. Uh, now we're going to see individual analysis of each of the properties. And it's so important for the property owners to know exactly what properties you're using as comparables and to find out a little bit about the property. As you can see, uh, this uh, Omni MLS CMA report is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Active properties here, summary analysis, pricing recommendation. Okay. And so this is just a listing price. This is remember my pricing recommendation that I that I wrote in myself. Uh, the location here and the comparable properties. There's one. I think the two is down here somewhere. Three and four. The comparative properties. Market analysis explanation. The benefits of using a realtor. This is great. I love this. Where the commission goes. Listing agent, selling agent. I didn't actually put numbers on there. That's why I guess uh, it gave me zeros there. Uh, but that's a pretty good explanation and, and a graphic there. Uh, steps to a positive showing. It's so important for the property owners to know that this is a, a team situation where, yes, we can bring clients, but they need to do their part as well. They need to ensure that we have a positive showing. And this is great. Now, the other option that it gave us here is to email a CMA. So we're going to, uh, this is the email already self generated of the person I reported it to. Uh, I can create a new contact here as well. Uh, I can uh, uh, send me a copy of this report, uh, report as well in the email body here. And then we just basically send, uh, hello, test email. Okay. And go ahead and send. And basically, you're going to be sending this particular PDF that we just went through to the client. Uh, this compared to market analysis, a 20-page compared to market analysis that we were able to generate in, 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 a, in, a, in what, three, four, five minutes. So that's... Uh, that's incredible. And that's it for the comparative market analysis report. Now we're at the 2.5. We're going to search for properties for buyers, but let's review some important aspects first. Remember to start from the main page and choose from the menu bar search. So we're going to go main page right here, which we're already at, and we're going to search. Now, as you can see here in search, we've got residential properties for sale, residential properties for lease, commercial sale, commercial lease, and land property. So let's just go ahead and search for uh, residential sale. Now it's important to keep in mind that when you do a property search, uh, the maximum number of a maximal searches is gonna be 5,000. As you can see down here, I've got over 5,000 matches because I haven't entered any search criterion. Now, if you need to see all of the listings, keep in mind there is no default option to see all the listings. If you want all the listings to be found in your search, well, then leave them all, uh, leave everything in your search criterion unselected. And Omni will assume that you want uh, all the values in the search, unless you specifically select certain values, thereby excluding those not selected. For example, uh, in the status section here, uh, obviously uh, we only want to send properties that are currently active, but let's just suppose that we don't. When we get rid of that active, we only want to show properties that are closed or expired. Well, then that would, that would, alternate that would uh, change what our results are. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. <clears throat> uh, uh, if you have already selected a value, but you really want to select all, hold down the control key and click the selected value to deselect. When all the items are selected, the background of the selection box will be white. If you have one or more elements, the background is in light blue, as you can see. White, not selected. Blue, item that is selected. So as, let's just say that we want to... Uh, uh, do a search uh, in the state of um, Cancun. Excuse me, that's not a state. The state of Quintana Roo. <laughs> there it is. And uh, the city of Tulum. Okay, there it is, Tulum. Now, as I can see here, my match is down at the bottom. I've got 103 matches. So I can go ahead and, and go and see what those matches are. Okay. And here are the properties. Now, the system only allows you to uh, to see, in this case, 25 at a time, unless I change this button here, and I want to say 100 at a time, which is going to give me 100 out of the 103 searches. So that's one way to search for properties. The other way, let me head back here a second, to search for properties, and I think this is really kind of cool, is to do a search by map. Let's just say uh, our client says, you know what, Javier, I'm looking for properties in 
Cabo. In this case, let me go down here. Or maybe they don't, you know, necessarily don't want Cabo. They're just interested in Baja California South. Well, no problem. I'm going to go here and draw a rectangle. And I'm pretty much selecting everything in Baja South. Well, at least the, where my client wants. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now I'm going to go to results. Now I'm going to see here at the bottom that I've got a total of 62 properties in my search criterion. Now let's just say my client says, Javier, I'm only interested in properties uh, in the uh, $300,000 range. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to actually uh, select a few that are under 300,000 because that's, uh, okay, maybe not 230, and then select a few that are above the 300,000. Yeah, 347 would be uh, higher. So maybe this 351. Now we'll just stop it there. <laughs> okay. After we have selected the properties within the price range and the area that our client is located, well, then we actually go over here to actions and we could do a couple of things. Number one, we can email this information to our client, just putting in his email address here. Uh, or we can create a new contact here, add the subject important and the email body, and then just go ahead and send. You can actually even preview what this uh, email is going to look like, as you can see. And these are the properties that I selected uh, uh, for this particular client within that 200000 or close to $250,000 range. And at the same time, it gave us a few other options. One more time. We can print, uh, for example, if I'm going to be just showing all these properties to my client on a visit here, then we can go ahead and, and print the properties that we have saved so that I have a reference now in the printing area, there's many different formats uh, I could use. We're gonna go ahead and do a hot sheet and uh, um, ah, that, that's enough. We're gonna go ahead and print there. And as you can see, it's just gonna give me a hot sheet of all those properties. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and do something else here. Uh, let's just go with the agent uh, full. And I'm gonna go ahead and print here. <clears throat> and as you can see over here on the left-hand side, it gives you a more uh, detailed uh, perspective on all the properties that I've selected. This is very, very important if you're gonna be showing off properties to a client. Um, and so I definitely, definitely suggest that you uh, uh, know the property, fall in love with the property, uh, and then obviously uh, help promote the properties. And that's like I said, one of the wonderful things about the MLS system is that it really is a collaboration tool for real estate agents and one that we're gonna be able to uh, work in any part of Mexico through the referral system. Uh, and so I think that's kind of fabulous. One of the other options that we have here is, uh, see the save button here? We can actually save these searches uh, and save these searches in a, in a manner that uh, we're able to look for them um, further on. So let's go ahead and uh, this is gonna be a new save search. I'm gonna call this uh, homes, uh, what I say, 350,000 in Baja. Okay, that's the name of the search, and I'm going to go ahead and save this search here. And now that search is saved. So when I'm looking now for homes in that uh, $300,000 uh, range um, in Baja, well, I will have already had that served. Uh, if you want to assign this search to one of their contacts, well, then I could actually <clears throat> drop down. I'm going to go here. I'm going to let's go uh, Javier Loza here. I'm going to save it under his name. So that I'm also, um, oops, did I press the button say? Remember, uh, oh, a search by that name already exists. Okay, so I've already saved one for Javier. Javier in Baja. Yeah, I bet you that doesn't. Uh, okay, so now I saved it as a uh, Javier looking for something in Baja. To access the save search area, you need to go to, once again to the Omni MLS tag. Now, in order to access the save searches, we need to go over here to the Omni MLS tab. Uh, right down here, see where it says save searches? And this is where we're going to see all the save searches that we have been put into the system. Uh, the screen for each section includes the name, any descriptions that you might have entered, the name of the contact to whom it has been assigned, if any, and the date, in addition to the last time that the search was run, as we're seeing here. Since I didn't assign the search to anybody, this appears blank in this section. Now, uh, on the subject line or in the search for more options to so the save search, so let's just go ahead and, and open up that search. I can uh, look at the settings of this particular search. OK, 
Okay, I can use the, uh, the criterion that I used. In this case, I think I used uh, other criterion because I used the map, remember? I can, the results of my search, well, here's all the properties that I, uh, uh, that I did the original search with in that particular zone. Any market updates on the properties? Well, since I just uh, rang it, ran it a few minutes ago, it's not gonna show anything up here. So once again, <clears throat> the settings button is same search settings, search name, contact, enable this favorite. The criterion button to review the search criterion. The results button to research, um, to return rerun the search and retrieve all matching listings and the date from. Uh, well, that's the date from here or the date sent, excuse me. Uh, to see all the new or modified listings that match your criterion since your last search. This will update the timestamp to the date and the time date from was clicked. Now, as far as the market update goes, click on the market update button to see the updated listing since the last run or specifying a specific date, uh, date uh, range. And last over here, the clear button or the delete button. <laughs> Um, basically, it's going to clear the button. Uh, if we click here, you sure you want to delete the search? Well, then obviously that's going to delete that search. And in my case, I'm going to actually go ahead and, and select both of these here and delete those searches in another manner. Um, Omni tells you when you're about to delete something that might be important to you. So we're going to go ahead and go there. Okay, now the next thing that we need to do is uh, how to send an email. So in my search results, let me go here to search. Once again, I'm going to search for a property listing. Once again, I'm going to do a map. This time, I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to go up here to TJ. And I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, actually, I kind of like Ensenada. So we're going to go ahead and do a, a wrap on Ensenada there. Okay. We're going to go to results. And once again, all the uh, listings here, <clears throat> there's 40 listings uh, found in. I love this stat. Okay, right now we're going to go to the section of reverse prospecting. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the uh, properties that you guys upload into your franchise CRM are going to be automatically uploaded here to the Omni MLS system. Unless you are an independent and you're going to be joining us through an association. In that case, you're going to have an additional button up here to publish properties. So I'm going to go here to my dashboard real quick. I'm going to go here to my listings. And in this case, I'm using uh, Gerardo Hernandez's um, <clears throat> uh, access here. And as you can see, he's got seven properties that are listed. If I want to check out a particular property of mine, then I would actually just click on that. I check out that the status here is active and all the information here on the properties. I could actually go property by property to see all the properties and see what... Uh, what information and basically the information that I put in that property. I'm going to go back to my listings here. Now, well, let's just say that I want to see if that property has been sent by other agents. This is what we call reverse prospect. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, select that one right there. I'm going to go to reverse prospect. And as I can see, there's no matching contacts. No problem. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to select this one. Okay. As I can see, uh, there is a reverse prospect uh, that was generated. And so it obviously it will not tell me the name of the client that this was sent to, but it will tell me the name of the agent. And because I know that Adriana Rodriguez sent this uh, uh, today at uh, date sent at 1.01 p.m., she sent this uh, to a contact. So I'm going to go ahead and send Adriana here a message from Gerardo. Uh, I could copy myself a message. I tell her whether it's English or Spanish. Hey, I uh, just saw... Uh, that you sent my property to a client of yours. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at 5579-404066. Boom, boom. Just saw, oops, hold on, hold on, my little. This song, okay, uh, feel. There we go. Oops, sorry guys. <laughs> okay, feel free to contact me, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just gonna go in and, uh, and send this message. However, I'm not gonna send it right now because I'm not Gerardo. So we'll just, we'll just leave it at that. So that's how you can tell how your listings are doing and what agents 
attract potential clients for your listings. One other thing that I need to mention, guys, is that technical assistance or support is provided so that users can make use of the system in an optional way to get the most out of this Omni MLS tool. The purpose of technical assistance is to help users resolve certain issues. Technical support can help to resolve through the system or remotely any questions about the MLS software that, that you need to have resolved immediately. Now, as far as the in system help, if we go up here to the top right hand side and we go to the help button, select the help button. And as you're going to see, it's got a menu here on the left hand side where we've got tutorials available in PDF. We've got tutorials in video. We've got uh, uh, subject matter of CMA, emailing, IDX configuration, matrix mobile, open houses, point to users, reverse prospecting, search, MLS usage, speed bar, shared listings, and contact us. So uh, <clears throat> uh, after the help button, you went to another screen, once again, where you're going to decide what type of help you need. So for example, maybe you need uh, uh, help with the CMA, or and maybe you need to know how to create a CMA. So as you press that button, it's going to give you a step-by-step -step information on how to be able to create the CMA. So this is uh, emailing, same thing. How do I email a listing? How do I set up an email signature? Uh, and, and many other things. So a lot of the information is already in the system and the how-to. All you need to know is basically how to look for it. Now, we also offer out-of-system help in order to resolve doubts about the system processes, which are not located in the tutorials or guides. Um, of the system. So if there's something in there that's not in the help section that you are definitely want help with, well, I, I would suggest that you contact uh, Omni MLS. Also remember that there is a manual based on the Omni MLS system for this quick start class. Make sure that you download it from the Moodle program. And also make sure that you take the policies and procedures webinar as well from Omni MLS system.